Hey guys, so my name is Matthew Trujillo. Um, I am the co-owner. I own a shop uh, with my older brother, Greg Trujillo of Age of Comics. Um, uh, we've actually just hit our eight year anniversary with, with the shop and uh, we are one of the largest shops in New Mexico. We deal with, uh, you know, comic books, high-end comic books, toys, pops, just all kinds of different things. Um, and I'm also uh, the, the promoter and showrunner uh, of New Mexico Comic Expo, which we, we've had uh, in 2019. Uh, and it, it was, we had Jason Momoa, Elijah Wood, John Bernthal, um, just tons of, of uh, celebrity guests come in and were a part of that show. Uh, so, so that's kind of who I am, guys. Uh, I also, uh, I'm locally born and raised. Um, I, I went to CNM, got an associate's there, and, um, and I, then I transferred over to UNM where I got a bachelor's oh. in architecture. Uh, as you can see, I own a comic book store and I run a comic convention, so wow. architecture Clearly went out the door after I got uh, got that degree, uh, but I did teach part time at, at, at a private school and, and went to my next passion, which was comic books, and been doing that ever since. Uh, I, I grew up here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, I, I mainly grew up on uh, when I was younger up on the east side of town, but then uh, when we turned about 12, 13, me and my family moved up to the west side. Um, closer to uh, like 98th and Central type area, so that's that's where I, I mostly mostly grew up in my later teens and stuff like that. Uh, so so my my daily life now with with uh, with the shop with Age of Comics is is busy, but it's easy at the same time because it is something that I love to do. Um, so basically, I, I my side of things is I manage uh, most of the finances. And just making sure that you know everything that needs to get done gets done in the shop. As to where my brother does a lot of the ordering, but that's something that we both work on together uh, for the most part when we can. Um, but that's some that's pretty much it. I mean, right now most of my time is being taken up with uh, with the expo and planning of that. Uh, the New Mexico Comic Expo the first year took me about a year and a half to plan. Um, now with COVID coming out of COVID and stuff like that, I'm kind of on a very tight schedule to try and get something launched here. Hopefully here in 2021. <laughs> yeah, so, so with the expo, um, it basically came about to the point where I felt I just wanted to do something bigger and different than what was already being presented to New Mexicans in a sense of a comic convention. Um, so, so I figured, you know what, I've been doing the comic book shop now for, at that time, I think six or, or five years or something like that, you know, and I figured I know enough comic book artists in general, you know, they, they kind of recognize me because of other conventions I've gone to over the years. Um, I could probably put something on just as good or better than what's already been presented. So that was kind of the first step was just kind of like, I think I can do it. And then from there I decided um, what kind of budget I want to work with and then can I get everything to fit within that budget. Um, unfortunately, I kind of went above the budget, but that's kind of expected, um, especially for a first year show. There's always, you know, little things that kind of come up that you're just not going to expect, you know, oh, security is this much. Oh, you know, I need, oh, the limo drivers, you know, or whatever else, you know, it's like, oh, I, I accounted for them, but I didn't count that much for them. Um, so, 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 yeah, basically, you know, I did that and then just decided, you know what, with that kind of budget, the kind of space I'm going to need is going to be large, you know, so I needed at least a minimum of like 30,000 square feet. I ended up going to the convention center, which was, I believe, 100,000 square feet. Um, and then using the Kiva auditorium in the other building for all the panels where the celebrities would go up and talk and just tell stories and whatever else, you know, so, so that was a lot of fun. Um, so, so that's kind of where, where, how things kind of rolled from, you know, oh, I can do this to, okay, what's my budget? Oh, well, that, my budget's this. Okay, let's, um, where can I fit that budget into what kind of space? Oh, the convention center. And then from there basically is, um, you know, announced kind of like a date. And now it's just, you know, all hands on deck, which is basically just me. Um, and I have, an, I have an assistant, um, Teresa, um, but it's basically just me planning everything in her kind of um, picking up whatever slack I may be like, hey, I need you to just contact this person or whatever, you know, the limo driver or whatever else. Um, but then at that point, it's just contacting and finding out celebrity agents uh, comic book creators uh, and trying to see if anybody's available and trying to get them booked uh, for the event and then um, sending out emails and social media posts and stuff like that letting people know hey we're new we're going to do the show uh, if you want to be a vendor contact us here fill out the application you know that type of thing and then from there it's basically start planning everyone's arrival you know for all the celebrities and the comic book artists and stuff like that of just like Okay, your 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 flight is leaving at this time from LA. You'll get in at this time. We'll make sure we have the car there to pick you up, and we'll get you straight to the hotel and, and that type of thing. And then getting them uh, itinerary as to what their weekend's going to look like. With oh, you're going to be signing for an hour and a half at this time, 
you'll do photo ops at this time, you'll have your panel at this time, and then we're going to do it all over again, you know, um, until the day's over, more or less. And then, uh, yeah, and from, from there, it's just kind of hectic. Um, you know, it, at that point, I, I was already able to surround myself with a better, with a team uh, of volunteers and staff that were able to kind of, I was able to designate, hey, you're going to do tickets, you're going to do you know, all the, tr the travel itineraries now. You know, once I got it all done, I just need you just to follow through and make sure they get done at the right time and they get picked up and stuff like that. And at that point, it was just me walking the floor and just making sure there's no fires or anything like that. You know, people were coming up kind of panic, not panicking, but like, oh my gosh, we don't know what to do with this person. His, uh, you know, his, his driver's not here yet. I'm like, well, his driver would be here how long? Like 10 minutes. I was like, just tell him to wait for 10 minutes. You know, it's not the end of the world. You know, people know that, you know, things happen. It's going to take a few minutes to get here or get there or their panel got pushed back because, you know, Jason Isaacs went a little long, you know, he, he just didn't feel like he was done talking after 45 minutes, you know, he wanted to go a little bit longer, which is fine. You know, you just have to adapt. So people are just kind of panicking and coming to me, trying to figure out what do we do? And, you know, just little fires, nothing major. And that was pretty much it. You know, I was just constantly walking the floor and just making sure everybody was content, everyone was happy, you know, uh, attendees were happy, vendors were happy, and all my guests were, were, were happy. And um, then basically it's the same thing. You make sure you have everyone's itineraries, get them on the plane and get them back home. And after that, it's basically just take a breath, take a little bit of time, you know, meet with the city, meet with the convention center, um, discuss kind of how things went, how things can be better for the following year. And then COVID happened. And now we're kind of back to square one here in 2021. Um, so, so no real specific tools that I use besides like Excel. You know, spreadsheets is like, is your best friend, you know. Um, I'm not great at them, but I can definitely use it to the point where it keeps me organized to the point where at least I know where I'm going and I can pass it on to someone else and they can kind of sort it out. Um, but, you know, Excel, I think is, and Word, you know, um, is definitely stuff that you you really want to kind of like focus on and learn. Because there's so much more you can do with it. And I have a friend who lives out in Texas that, that helped me kind of keep a lot of... Um, the cash flow and the celebrity, you know, guarantees, you know, just different things like that. He helped uh, build a spreadsheet for me and, and kept it real nice and clean, you know, cause I sent him like, Hey, here's a rough idea. And he just kind of laughed and he's like, I'll fix that for you. Don't worry about it. Um, you know, so, so that was nice. Uh, but, but, and, and when it comes to, you know, like just me personally, in a sense of like, what skills did I have to be able to put on a show? Uh, Honestly, I think it's just maybe being able to be kind of like a people person, being able to sit down and talk to somebody, even if you don't have anything in common with them, or know really anything about them, but just being able to speak with them and get them to open up about themselves and explain to you, you know, why they've done what they've done, maybe, you know, um, why they, why did Jason Momoa want to be an actor or, you know, why did Chris Carmont decide, oh, why are you writing comic books? You know, different things like that um, is, I think, a bigger skill set. And it's not something you can, it's something you can learn. Um, with me, I was very shy, like in high school, as a younger kid, even at, at um, UNM, you know, when I, in my first or second year at UNM, I was still pre fairly shy, you know, it was a lot, it was big, wasn't used to it. Um, but you know, you, you make those friends and you kind of start coming out of your shell and whatnot. And then from there, it's just kind of all out the window. You just kind of become yourself. You start to discover who you really are. <laughs> Sorry, my daughter, <laughs> you know, it, it's things like that. You just want to be able to develop, um, the skills that you're, you feel you might be set for, um, and just continue developing them. Yeah, you know, I was listening to the podcast the other day and it was just basically saying, you know, um, you work for somebody else, which is fine. You, you're there to solve their problems, you, you know, um, which is great. You know, solve problems. I solve problems all the time when I was at Best Buy and Radio Shack and, and all that. But then once you become your own boss, you have to start solving your own problems now. You're not someone else's problems, but your own problems. So it's just a matter of how you go about getting those job, those, those situations completed and, and done, you know, like with me, it's my schedule is very busy. So I'm always trying to find little areas where I can, okay, I have the girls to at this time. Okay. Me, I guess I could take them with me to go do this errand. I could go to the drive through because I have two little girls and I don't want to get them out of the car, you know, and, and they're just going to run all over the place and it's just hectic. So I'm always trying to figure out what's the best time I can do this or do that. You, you know, Oh, doctor's appointments at this time. Okay. I can drop them off with my mom here at this time before my wife gets home from work or, or whatever, or she gets home from work. Me, as soon as she gets home, I can take off and go, you know, run to the bank or I can go make this phone call or, or do whatever it is I need to do you know, on that given day. But every day it's, it seems it's like, it's just nonstop. I'm always on the phone with, with somebody or something going on.
I really like, uh, you know, having, you know, being my own, uh, my own boss basically, because it does give me the, the flexibility to be able to work from home and have my girls run around while I am working. Um, it does make it difficult trying to make phone calls or interviews. Um, but you know, it, 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 it works, you, you know, and, and just a, uh, the ability to be home with my kids as much as I am is, is priceless on its own. Uh, so a five year plan basically right now is, uh, continue with the shop. You know, we're, we're kind of looking at maybe doing some kind of, uh, something maybe with a franchise uh, moving forward. Not quite sure yet. It's just kind of an idea I've been throwing around. I've talked to some other people that might be interested in, you know, in, in being a franchisee in that, that sense. Not sure if it's something we'll ever go through, but it, that's a possibility there. With the expo, I'd like to continue doing that um, moving forward and help letting that kind of grow uh, uh, pretty naturally on its own. Um, and, and then just, you know, other ventures that I ha kind of have, you know, moving forward, you know, I'm looking to get into maybe some real estate and, you know, just other things here and there. Um, you know, I, it's, it's just one of those things I'm, I'm I would like to retire <laughs> come 40 when I turn 45. Um, but again, I, I won't stop working. Uh, I, that, that would just be too boring. <laughs> you know, it, it's, I think it's more of just a thought process of, oh, I can tell people I'm retired, but I'm still working, you know, not, it's not that big of a deal. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, guys, just don't be afraid of, of who you are. And, and, you know, even if you don't know who you are or what you want to do, you know, my four-year-old daughter just says she wants to be an astronaut, you know, awesome. I remember being four or five years old, I want to be a jet pilot, you know, watching Top Gun. And now with a new Top Gun movie, I'm like, man, I could go be a pilot again. You know, it, it, you're never too old to do anything. You know, I might not be able to fly a jet, but maybe I could fly, you know, the, the you know, the personal small planes, you know. Um, so, so don't ever shut yourself down or anything like that. You know, always, you know, people say shoot for the stars. Shoot for the stars. If you hit it, cool. If not you know, get up in a plane. Um, it, it, it's, you know, you'll always develop uh, new skills and don't ever stop developing new skills. Always continue to, to learn and keep growing. Uh, you never want to be just uh, content where you're at.